Let's briefly discuss diabetes insipidus and the syndrome of inappropriate diuretic hormone. I am trying to present it in a simple and easy way to remember this information. I know that when I was in nursing school, I always mixed these two diseases and some other diseases too. So, let's dive in. Diabetes insipidus. In diabetes insipidus, there is decreased secretion of antidiuretic hormone from the posterior pituitary gland, or kidneys are resistant to ADH and are unable to concentrate urine. On the other hand, in the syndrome of inappropriate diuretic hormone, we have an increase in antidiuretic hormone. I am trying to present the differences between these two diseases. This is how I learn, hopefully, this technique will work for you guys as well. Clinical manifestations of diabetes insipidus are polyuria, polydipsia, nocturia. These patients are dry inside. Hypernatremia develops when water losses are not replaced. Clinical manifestations of the syndrome of inappropriate diuretic hormone are oliguria, headache, Seizures with decreased sodium levels below 120. Hyponatremia. Diagnostics. Patients with diabetes insipidus have. Low urine specific gravity. Decreased urine osmolality. Patients with syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone have. Increased urine specific gravity. Increased urine osmolality. Here is a picture of the notes that I made to remember this information. Diabetes insipidus have high sodium levels and the other values are down, which means low urine specific gravity and decreased urine osmolality. On the other hand, syndrome if inappropriate diuretic hormone have decreased sodium level and the other values are up means high urine-specific gravity and high urine osmolality. Pharmacological management. Desmopressin and vasopressin both treat diabetes insipidus. They enhance water reabsorption, reduce urine flow, and increase osmolality. And we slowly rehydrate them with a hypotonic solution. We treat syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone with 3% saline, diuretics to get rid of the fluid and demeclocycline. This is all you need to know in order to answer the questions related to these topics, and of course, critically thinking is important to answer any question. I will be making a video soon on how to critically think and how to choose the best answer. I hope you like this video. Stay blessed.